This is the OFN Today on the Orleans Football Network as we recap week three in the NFL. And we'll do our best to stay away from the New York football teams. Right, Ryan? <laughs> they're like, a, they're contagious. I can't get away from them. I, uh, I thought I was leaving behind losing football when I stopped covering the Big Ten and Rutgers. And now I feel like I go to an Ohio State Rutgers game every week. Yeah, that's uh, and it's the NFL, which makes it even worse. So, uh, yeah, I, it, it's it is what it is. But, uh, you know, Team A, which is the Giants, they're in a rebuild, full blown rebuild with a new coach. That's why they, they didn't hire Judge to turn his team around in a week. So they're in full blown rebuild. And uh, the Jet fans, they because they can't stand Adam Gase when he was hired. Uh, they're not going to, they don't care who's injured, who's playing. It's all his fault. They want him gone. And they're not going to be happy even if they do fire him. They're not going to be happy until they start winning football games. Yeah. And same with the Giants. It's, you know, it's, they judge doesn't really get a whole lot of patience with Giants fans either because, you know, the last seven years have been losing and the GM's in his third year and it looks like they're starting over in his third year yeah, so. it's, true. it's true yeah you see that's the thing that i fall back on with douglas which is this is all about joe douglas if yeah. he believes gase is the guy that's up to him i trust douglas i think he's a really good hire and i and he was hired for five six years whatever the term is because of the fact they're giving him a full re they're giving him time this isn't yeah. going to be a quick fix and whether or not you believe in adam gase or not it's not it's, that's not the point the point is do you believe in joe douglas and yep that that's how I have to take it when I when I do these Jets games, uh, Jet shows, because I know how it is out there. They just, I mean, after I do these shows, I'm trying to be the most patient. I'm trying to find yeah. the positives and all the negatives, and it, and they don't want to hear it. It's it's yeah. just it's hard, and and I get I, it. I mean, I'm a Jet fan. It's been ten years almost now. Yeah. So I completely understand. It's ironic. The Jets have the GM they trust, but not the coach, and the Giants have the coach they trust. But I'm talking about fans. Sure. The Giants yeah. fans have the coach they trust, but not the GM. But even yesterday, after that beat down by the 49ers, I was getting people questioning whether Judge is the right guy. And I was like, oh, my God, he's had three games with, <laughs> with a bad roster. Yeah. Like, really um, bad. And that's because they look at the other side. And it's funny because I was listening. I was watching Gio and, and, and Boomer today. And Gio, who I like because he's a funny guy. But, you know, he talks about. Well, oh, I don't understand. Look at San Francisco. They can they, they get all these guys hurt and it's the second uh second yeah. string guy come in, third string guy. How come that can't happen here? And it's like, "Geo, dude, Mike Shanahan, yeah, I mean Kyle Shanahan, do you think that th he he didn't go through this for 2 years in San Francisco?" So, well, he had fans in San Francisco wanting his butt for 2 years even when Garoppolo went down. They didn't want to hear it. They had all the losing and then finally in year 3, they built the roster up. Everybody stayed healthy and they went on a run. Now it's a lot easier when you when you win it, when you get to a Super Bowl and you have that foundation. It's easier when you have injuries to go to your your backup guys because you have a winning culture now. Here's here's the problem, Greg. The Jets and the Giants at the, the difference between the Jets, Giants, and the 49ers. The Giants and the Jets are playing their backups. They just happen to be starters for them. Like, the problem with the Giants and the Jets, the 49ers' stars were injured, so they put in backups. Well, the Giants' backups are their starters. What they, the, the Lorenzo Carters and the, you know, Jordan Jenkins and, you know, so on, the, the Greg Van Rotens and the, you know, Nick Gates of the world. These guys are backup players who are starting for the New York team. What the Jets and Giants don't have are the good players. They don't have the difference makers. They don't have the Kittles and the Bosa's and the Richard Sherman's. Yep. They're not missing the back. It's not like, oh, our backups aren't as good as their backups. No, your starters are bad. That's the problem. Yeah, and it takes time, and uh, yeah, and and it is it, it is a different contrast, like you said, because Gettleman's been there a few years. So where's the what are you doing? Where's the buildup? Where, where, where are your players? Uh, Daniel Jones, that's going to be the tricky thing, of course, because and just like Sam Darnold. And yeah. that's, right. I think, where fans get frustrated the most. I think, because to me, and I've said this since week one, it's all about, you know, if the Jets win four games, doesn't matter. Have you developed Sam Darnold? That's the key for the season. And so far, that's not happening. I'm not saying I'm blaming Gase for it, but Sam Darnold just doesn't look very good, whether or not it's Gase's fault or Darnold's fault. 
And when you take a look at the Giants, that's how it's going to go as well with Jones. And he's yeah. on his you – know, and the difference is Darnold had an offseason finally where he had the same coach, the same system. They talked him up in the in the practice. Oh, he looks so good in practice. He's – oh, it's, it's like night and day. And then he comes out on the football field and he doesn't play apparently like he plays in practice, which tells you there's something wrong with his play right now, whether it's psychologically or not. At least Daniel Jones has an excuse, second year, second coordinator. He he needs a little bit more time. Yeah. Uh, he's Darnold isn't facing the Jets defense in the games, which is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> he's facing them in practice. He's not facing them in the game. Yeah. Which... And he doesn't have, he's, he's got a revolving door of receivers and linemen and, they're both a disaster. Yeah, it's to uh, that's why you know fans. It'd be different. Trevor Lawrence is going to be on one of these two teams. I think. I think one of these two teams will be picking number one. So. Yeah, and Trevor, you're right. And, and if it's it's interesting because that was brought up. So you you think if the Giants see for me, it's uh, Darnold's a year a year later. He also, like I said, second second year, same system. So he doesn't have as much excuses as, say, Jones would. But you believe that even if it's the Giants that and they invested such a high pick on Jones that there's no way that they would pass on Trevor Lawrence. If the Giants have the number one pick, they'll have a new general manager. The new general manager will want his new quarterback. Ah, the new, okay. You, know, you, you don't pick on – you don't pass on Andrew Luck or Peyton Manning or a can't-miss guy. You can pass on – Carson Wentz or Jared Goff or somebody who's sure. just supposed to be good. You don't pass on a can't miss quarterback. Yeah. You don't like pass Trevor on Lawrence. Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, Andrew Luck. I don't even know if Burrow is in the category of Lawrence. I, I think uh, he is. I, uh, Lawrence it, is really good, but yeah, I, I, I think Burrow's got it. Um. So anyway, my point being, you don't pass on that guy. So I think either one of those teams picking one will, you know, shop their current quarterback and you know, start from scratch. Well, like you said, new- though, it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, the, the point is, is that with the Giants, if they get the first pick, it's not just about, well, what do you think Dave Gettleman's going to do? It's Dave Gettleman well, ain't going to be there. Well, it's the same thing with Joe Douglas. Sam Darnold isn't Joe Douglas, this guy. So, yep. you know, he'll, he'll and he ain't going to be the head coach's guy if they have the first pick. So I would think either one will start yep. over. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So as far as the rest of the NFL, the good NFL, uh, we saw that last night with the Packers over the Saints, Rodgers and Breeze. Uh, Green Bay gets the job done. You know, it's interesting because the Saints had Breeze only uh, missed on seven passes. So he was 29 of 36, three touchdowns, no picks. The team rushed for 6.1 yard average and it lost. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. And they're supposed to be the team with the better defense, the Saints. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of us picked them to win the Super Bowl. I can't remember. <laughs> Uh, no, they they've uh, they haven't been good the the first three weeks of the season. They haven't been the Saints that we know. But I think Breeze put some minds to ease last night with his performance and him throwing the ball. So you know how the Patriots kind of stink every September. Yeah, and, it happens, uh, sure. Yeah, everybody panics yep. and then oh, they go eleven and five and they're in the Super Bowl. It's early. Kind of. That's kind of what I'm thinking. And the Saints are going through right now. Yeah, they've earned the the respect. That at one and two, you're like, okay, it's early. I'm not worried yeah. about the Saints. Uh, but as far- I, the Packers, uh, the Packers thing we, you and I have talked about before. Like, I don't understand why people thought the Packers were going to be bad, and sure enough, they're not bad. You know, I, I the more I think about it, I, I think that a big reason might be the the Jordan Love pick. I think yeah. got people thinking. Well, what's going on behind? What do we, what do we know? What what don't we know that they <laughs> seem to think that they know? Because they why know. would they do this when they have Aaron Rodgers on the team that still looks like he should be a you know a top five NFL quarterback for another three seasons? What what do they know? And I think people kind of got a little bit scared that wait a second. Well, their defense isn't very good. They didn't really do much to improve it. They're they're going after Love. Maybe there's some sort of rebuild coming. So, yeah. no, I don't think so. I think this <laughs> apparently was not. Yeah, this was just Packers following the play, the Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers plan. Yeah, but Aaron Rodgers already admitted that he's more than likely gone next year. Correct. Yeah, until the, unless the Packers say we don't want you to go, here's a you know three year, hundred twenty million dollar contract, then he ain't gone. So well, he's yeah, gone. Well, hey, how about this? Or, All right, how about this then? They they, they do trade Aaron Rodgers. Okay. okay. 
uh, does Aaron Rodgers, does he say, I'm only going to go somewhere where I know I can win, even though he's not going to have control of that because he's I under contract? He's that, yeah, I think he's that type of guy. That's, that seems very much like something he would do, yeah. And they would probably honor that because he's meant a lot to the franchise. I would, I could see that as him having six preferred destinations, absolutely. Saints would probably yep. be at the top then if Breeze ain't going to be there. Probably, yeah. Yep. All right, uh, Seattle and Dallas. Seattle remains undefeated. Uh, Russell Wilson threw five more touchdown passes. That's record 14 for the first three games of the season. No NFL quarterback's ever done that. Uh, Prescott had a big day, but he had three turnovers. That's the difference. Yeah. And it should have been six for Russell, right? Didn't DK yes. Metcalf drop the ball at like the one yes. yard line or something? And I have uh, Russell Wilson and DK Metcalf on my fantasy team. So I wasn't yeah. pleased when that happened. I, I uh, had a good Ru- week, but I wasn't pleased. So yeah, that well, was one of that was a Deshaun Jackson type move. Yeah, we we love uh the young quarterback. We we're in the era of the young impact quarterback, Josh Allen. Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Russell Wilson just keeps chugging along here at whatever he is, 31, 32, whatever he is. As he's ba- right now, he's better than Breeze. He's better than Rodgers. He's better than Brady. Of the veteran quarterbacks playing in the league, the guys with the five years or more under their belt, he's the best one, and it's not close right now. Uh, the thing about Seattle, though, is definitely injuries. Uh, Adams went down with a groin. I don't. It doesn't appear, appear, appear like it's serious, but still, that he... The defense is already – you have issues, and now you got Adams out with a groin at least for a half. Uh, Brooks, yeah. one of their top draft picks, uh, had a knee injury. He hasn't really been able to get going yet. And they have a few other uh, – Quentin Dunbar didn't even make the game because he was inactive. Uh, so if Seattle is going to have a chance, a real chance for a Super Bowl championship – they got to get they got to get these guys healthy and and you know I I don't know whether or not because they've been they've already traded away the, the the picks that they've traded for Adams I don't know if they can make any other deals to bring in any other impact defenders. Uh no probably not no I mean I think they're gonna you know look in season trades are rare right Greg like we don't see a lot of in season trades I guess there have been a couple more in the last a uh, couple years than historically, but no, I think they're going to roll with what they have. I think there's more than enough there that if the guys recover, they, you know, they'll, they'll be 12 and four. And they're one of those teams that only the playoffs matter at this point. They're like, they've reached that status where, you know, they're going to be in the playoffs every year. And you know, their, their season boils down to the conference championship game in the divisional round. Okay. As far as the other top games of the week, Buffalo and the Rams. What a crazy game that was. And, wow. Great game. You know, and, uh, you know, this is the other thing that is just, it kills the, at, the, the atmosphere of the game. It's sort of like putting together, like a, a, a trying to put an Oscar winning movie together without music. That's what's going <laughs> on when you're watching the games without the fans, because you yep. see these great plays like but you don't now. hear anything, and you're and it doesn't like it doesn't make sense to your brain. It's a, it's just weird, especially like when you're now. seeing teams go back and forth making plays like this. And like the Bills scoring a touchdown with 50 seconds left, 15 seconds left, and it's like quiet. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we were saying in the press box at MetLife yesterday that uh, the Giants were quite lucky there were no fans because they would have <laughs> yeah. been off the field in the second half. And it goes the other way too with the excitement. And, yeah, you know the. Uh, you know, there was a touchdown yesterday in the Giants game on an end around to Brandon Nayuk, and all, I, I missed it. I was, like, tweeting something, and I didn't even know the ball was snapped. <laughs> there were no fans, like, wake me up to look from my right. computer mod. The Bills-Rams game was awesome. Uh, Josh Allen, again, continues to look like that. The best of those top ten, the four top ten quarterbacks from the 2018 draft class. People love to knock him, and he loves to just find ways to get it done. I think he's he's really got a like kind of like that it factor. I like that about him. Uh, and there was the two controversial calls, right? The ran, the pass interference on the Rams at the end that of the was game. That a bad call. But people forget, and this is like people say this all the time, right? Like things have a way That's of evening right. out. There's no scientific way <laughs> to prove that, right? But yeah. uh, in this case, I think there was because that, that was a terrible call against the Rams. But that was a terrible call against the Bills in the third quarter when Tyler Croft made that jump ball interception and they ruled it a 
inter- uh, that jump ball reception, and they ruled it an interception that the defensive back wrestled it away. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Where did that they even a- come up with that one? I mean, it, 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 I-, I don't even know how they did that. And they reviewed it and still still yeah. said that. And that's what, and that's what lit the comeback. That's I right. That, that made it 28-17 or something. So, again, things that, I don't know that I always believe this, but certainly in that game and that day, well, it was a way of even Let's not out. forget week one when the Rams got the beneficiary of the call against the, 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 the Cowboys. Yep. Yep. And if that would have went the Cowboys way, because the Cowboys definitely had a gripe against Jalen Ramsey, the Rams might have lost that game. Yep. And it could be one well, and two right now. Yep. Instead, the Cowboys are one and two. Yeah. And they're lucky to be one and two. And they're, they're one and two because they, they, they came back and beat the Falcons. And now everybody's coming back to beat the Falcons. Now, this week, I, had, I was on the verge of having my perfect week. I only had five top games. I had three top picks and two upset specials. So I, I, I got even on one because that was the Bengals. So I didn't win or lose. I, I got Carolina to win so that one. I had the Patriots to cover, Seattle to cover. And which was the game I didn't have to cover was Atlanta because I didn't know Nick Foles was getting into the game. Okay, if you would have told me on Thursday whenever I made those picks that Nick Foles would play in the game, then I would have stayed away from that one. I was betting against Mitch Trubisky, not with Nick mm-hmm. Foles. No, it's not. Look, it's not surprising. Uh, look, Jaguar, the Jaguars might have something with Gardner Minshew. Maybe, maybe not. You and I have talked about that. Mm-hmm. But they did not give Nick Foles a fair chance. No. Nick Foles has something. And whether it's Philadelphia or now Chicago, like I don't know that he's going to win a Super Bowl MVP for the Bears. But he, he has a little magic to him. There are guys like that who have that. Nick Foles does. I think the Bears are made the right decision. You don't see quarterbacks benched on 2-0 and teams very yeah, often. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That shows you they didn't really want Trubisky to be the starter at the season. No, they that's did that. the interesting question. Is that we, I, mean, I think the consensus of America felt that Foles should have been the starter week one. And that when Trubisky got it, it was more of, oh, it has to be because they, you know, the GM pays and, 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 you know, Nagy, whoever, whoever you want to say, they're, they're trying to justify the pick and they want to make, yep. they want to give him one more chance. And even yep. though we talked about this, I think last week, even though they've won two games, there was nothing about Mitch Trubisky that you saw in the giant game that led you to believe that Trubisky was part of the winning. So I, uh, so in a way, I applaud them for pulling yes, the plug true. up to an hour and not wait yep. until three. You know? yep. and, and Matt Ryan looked awful, by the way, late in that game. I mean, it was three and out, three and out, three and out. And then they get the ball to 45 on the last drive. There's more than enough time left. And he throws a terrible interception to end the game. So Matt Ryan deserves a lot of blame uh, in, 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 in that comeback as well. Because And by the way, the comeback started – when Koo missed a 48 yard field goal at the end of the third quarter, they would have went up 29 to 10. That yep. probably puts the game over because you're now three scores away. So, if, you know, a couple of things I thought of yesterday was the score of the, the Bills blew was 28 3, which is the Fal- same score the Falcons blew in the Super Bowl to the Patriots. <laughs> yeah, right. and, and as I'm, wa- as I'm on Twitter waiting for Joe Judge to 45 minutes after the game yesterday, as I'm waiting for Joe Judge and I'm scrolling through my Twitter and I'm seeing uh, hot take after hot take about fire Dan Quinn today. I, I thought of you and I was like, is the interim coach Dirk Cutter? Is yeah, that, oh, is it that... better not be. <laughs> no, I, it's got to be Raheem Morris. It has Probably. to be. Probably. Yeah, but I get where you're coming from on Perfect. that one. Yeah. And interestingly enough, the Falcons actually, for the first time, maybe the Dirk Cutter history of coaching, they actually had a very good running game. It had like a six yard average running, yeah. but then yeah. late in the game, cause I looked at the play charts cause I wanted to see, I was looking at the stats and I watched the, some of the game, but I was looking at the stats. Oh, whoa, 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 why are they running so successfully? And they had a big lead and I, I, I'm not getting this. What happens? So I looked at the drive charts, but he, he did, he did stick with the running game. They just couldn't get enough running momentum late. So, you know, he went first down run, second down run, third down pass. And he did that for a couple of drives. In the third drive, he went pass, pass, pass. But I'm okay with that. The first two, you tried to run the football. So it wasn't – it was just surprising. Dirk Cutter actually, you know, they had a good running game and still they lost. So how long do you give Dan Quinn? I think he's – I would be surprised if he makes it maybe one more week. 
Uh, I think that's probably four is probably a fair number. Uh, it was on the hot seat last year. And it's not just that they're losing. It's the way that they're losing. Yeah, the those first, are excruciating. Yes. The first team ever in NFL history to blow back-to-back 15-point fourth-quarter leads. I mean, you just can't can't have that. Yep, especially so, after you do it in a Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. so I would think probably one more week is fair. Uh, Cincinnati and uh, Philadelphia, uh, this one I was I mentioned, this was one of my upsets, so I, I almost got it. Uh, Philly scores late, ties it. They go to overtime. Elliott's about to attempt a 59-yard field goal, and he had, uh, uh, he had a successful 61, I think. Against the Giants. Okay. Uh, so you, that made sense. And then they get pushed back five yards for a flag. So now it becomes the 64-yarder. Here, what the flag was on? Uh, it was on prior, the offensive lineman, for a false start. Okay. okay. So they go back five yards at 64. Now, I would have been okay if they would have attempted it, but he, you know, apparently they know Elliott. I mean, if Elliott thought he could make 64, maybe he doesn't. So, uh, But it was now, I think, fourth and 12. Now, they had a problem throwing the football. They, they, you know, they, this is another situation where people are already talking about Carson Wentz. What for? He doesn't have any receivers to throw the ball to. I'm not the hugest Carson Wentz fan to begin. I mean, I, I think he's a good player. He's overachieved, but he's always injured, and you can't count on him. Uh, but I can't blame him when he doesn't have any receivers this season. So yeah. I think that was the smart way to go, even though Peterson is second guessing himself today, saying maybe I think thinking about it, I would have went for it. But you do that. The Bengals would have had the ball at midfield with about 15, 12 seconds left, whatever. One pass and you have a chance to win the field goal and you lose the game. Now you get a tie. The tie is actually better than a loss considering how pathetic your division is. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Look, I think it's the right call. It's what I would do if Ryan Dunleavy was the head coach. I just thought it was a little bit against who Doug Peterson yes. is. Yeah. I think of Doug Peterson. I think of a guy who gambles. Yep. I think of a guy who you know, plays to win, not to tie. So I thought it was a little out of character. And that's alarming to me because coaches go out of character when they see their team has major flaws. That was a coach who was saying, you know what, if we miss this, yeah, he could tell you he wasn't thinking negatively at all. He was. Because he was thinking, if we miss this and we give up a 15-yard pass, we're 0-3. That's what he was thinking. You're, on, you're, only, you're playing not to lose there. And that's fine if that's who you are. There are coaches who are conservative and play not to lose. Uh, Marty Schottenheimer comes to mind, right? But, um, but there is the way Doug Peterson is yeah. and the reason he is and the reason he won a Super Bowl is it's because he's a little bit of gambler, and for him to check himself into that situation tells you there's a lot. He sees a lot of flaws with his roster. Okay, uh, speaking of decisions that need to be made, uh, may not be made for another week or two, but that's Justin Herbert and the Chargers. Uh, they lose the game, but he goes 35 of 49, 330 yards passing, almost leads them all the way down the field. They had the the little trick gimmicky Don Shula-esque play that nearly worked. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm hearing, you're hearing conflicting things on the two shows today, uh, yesterday. I think it was on the, the uh, CBS show. Uh, they, they, they made it sound that, oh, you know, Taylor, he says, uh, 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 not Taylor, not Telesco even. Um, Lynn? Lynn. That Taylor's my man. Then I put yeah. on Fox oh, well, now he's thinking about that maybe that's the way I'll actually go to Herbert if he's playing well. So I don't know what to think. Uh, but after back-to-back really good performances, even though they lost, I, I still don't I don't see how you go back to Taylor. No, especially, look, they, here's what coaches miss a lot of the times. It's like, they're like, oh, I'm going to play the veteran because he gives me the best chance to win. And then, you know, especially if you're on the hot seat. I don't know that that's it. Like, nobody wants to see you go 4-12 and 12 with Tyrod Taylor. So you no. might as well go 2-14 and 14 with the young guy and show that you can coach him and he can play and you're, you know, just a couple of pieces away. Now, I think the right move for Anthony Lynn is to go with uh, Justin Herbert as long as you believe he can play. Like, no one wants to see you put him in and he's, you know, Josh Rosen his rookie year who wasn't ready at all. And then it's like, oh, well, then we got nothing. 
uh, no, if you think he can play, you play him because people would much rather – the future is much brighter – with two wins and a good rookie quarterback than it is with five wins and Tyrod Taylor. And the other thing, too, is is you would think that, again, look, if this was a, a normal organization, just like you said with Gettleman, if this is a normal organization like the Giants are, if they were to win four games at the end of the year, Telesco's gone, Lynn's gone, and you bring in some really good coaches, a new staff, a new GM, and you try to build the team around Justin Herbert. But this is the Chargers. And if, since it is the Chargers, I mean, Telesco will be back probably. So Telesco has got to be communicating with Lynn about who, because Lynn is probably like you said, sh- should Lynn, shouldn't Lynn be talking to Telesco and say, look, if I'm going to start t- uh, the, the younger quarterback that I don't think I, I, is ready and I'm going to lose more games, is my job safe? Yeah, absolutely. should be happening behind the scenes. Look, the Giants last year when they fired Pat Shermer, they knew whoever was hired was get Daniel Jones. This He is your quarterback. So uh, you no know, need to apply here if you don't want Daniel Jones. That'll be the Justin Herbert situation. He is your quarterback if you're that coach of them. Now that might not happen with Darnold or with, with Jones this year, but with the Chargers to Justin Herbert, he's your quarterback. So uh, whoever the coach is, that's who you're getting. Uh, another young quarterback that is actually struggling, that's uh, Dwayne Haskins with Washington. But you know Haskins is one of the young quarterbacks that you can throw into Jones and Darnold. He doesn't have any talent around him. You know, it's a losing culture there. Uh, they're going to try to change that with Rivera. But uh, I've never, I was, I really, I wasn't a big Haskins guy coming out of college. I thought he was uh, a product of the Ohio State system. Uh, that doesn't mean he can't eventually become a starter in this league. But they're going to stick with him. He just didn't play very well, uh, and Cleveland took advantage of that. Yeah, again, like I, it's funny. If you ask me who's going to switch quarterbacks first, the Redskins or the three and O Bears, I would have picked the excuse me the Washington Football Team or the three and O Bears. I would have picked the Washington Football Team, but uh, I, I like what they're doing. Like they're not going anywhere. Kyle Allen isn't the answer. You might as well play uh, Haskins and let him see. I was a big Haskins guy coming out of college. I thought uh, that's who the Giants should have picked six. Um, they didn't obviously. They went with Daniel Jones instead. Uh, but I have had scouts tell me exactly what you said, that if you go back and watch Dwayne Haskins one year at Ohio State where he was a starter, so much of it was a pass five yards or less from the line of scrimmage. And, and no whoever, pressure. And whoever it be, Curtis Samuel or whoever the, the cast of fly, flying slot men was, of running backs uh, would just catch the ball, turn up field, and you know, he had a 40-yard pass out of something that he actually threw three yards, and that scared a lot of scouts, and I think that, uh, you know, some of that will rear its head here in the NFL. Okay. Uh, by the way, the Browns in that game, they ran the ball 37 times, uh, 4.3 average, and, of course, Chubb is the, is, the, is the main guy there. Mayfield only attempted 23 passes. I was actually going to talk about this last week, and now I've seen all I need to see again. I think what Stefanski, I think if the Browns do this kind of philosophy moving forward, I think they'll be better off for it. They need to be extremely balanced. If not, run the ball more in these types of games and throw it because that'll make Mayfield a better quarterback. It'll make the team a better uh, team. They've got the running uh, duo, Hunt and Chubb. There's no reason for that team to throw the football, you know, two or three, three more times and run the football. There's one reason. There's one reason. A very half unhappy Odell Beckham. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, 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 he will. I mean, well, he so will far, pick. he's saying the right things. Yeah, so, okay. So let's, far. Let's, let's see him say the right things when at, in, in December he has 47 catches yeah. for 512 yards and two touchdowns. That's right. He's going to have to deal with it. If he doesn't, then, yep, it's going to be ugly. He said, he said a hundred times that his main priority is winning. He might have to prove it. If, That's right. If there, I think you're right, a thousand percent. Hunt and Chubb need to lead this team. They have maybe the best running back duo in the NFL. So let's see. You know, if they want to get back to the playoffs, that's probably their ticket. Uh, also, uh, Tennessee uh, beat Minnesota. That was a crazy game. Uh, Minnesota finally uh, found their first round draft pick, Justin Jefferson, at his breakout <laughs> game. That's going to mean a lot to that team overall. But the defense is in shambles. They can't stop anybody. Kaskowski was 6-for-6 six six with the 55-yarder to win the game. 
they had more than enough time to march to, uh, march down the field and score. And then, like, I think on three out of the four passes, Cousins almost got sacked and couldn't even throw the ball to Cook on this check down. Uh, so uh, Minnesota, wow, 0-3. Yeah, we talked last week. I think this could be the end of the Zimmer era this year for sure. I don't think they're a playoff team. I didn't pick them as a playoff team before the season. I definitely don't think they are one now. And uh, I think uh, it was kind of cool to see Guskowski come through, right? Because sure. he had the brutal game one. And in the Twitter, social media, fan overreaction, hot take world, it was like, ah, oh, just kickers are a dime a dime. <laughs> yeah, right. right his butt and sign joe smith off the street yeah and it's well you know what no even kickers can have bad games so yeah. uh kind of cool to see him deliver uh by the way this week tennessee at home against pittsburgh really good football game once again though vegas disrespecting tennessee making them a home a home doesn't mean much now but making them a home one point dog yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, we saw it when in our Super Bowl picks, right, when they were thirty-three to one. Yeah. They don't get a lot of respect. Well, they don't have a lot of look. They, they're not a team a lot of people bet on. There's a, uh, you know, there's a, uh, they don't have a lot of star power. You know, it's not a Nashville isn't an NFL franchise hotbed. It's just kind of a good team that sneaks under the radar. And it so. is Pittsburgh. They've got the name. I'd be interested to see if that line holds up. It's early in the week. We'll see. It could it could go the other way by by kickoff, but uh, just uh, the disrespect there. I mean, Tennessee the three and O and their dog against Pittsburgh, and okay, Pittsburgh's been okay, but they just they just struggled to beat Houston too. That's it, right? Like if the Bears are the worst three and O team, the Steelers aren't. You know, they might not be bad, but they're yeah. if the Bears are the worst three and O team, the Steelers are the least proven three and O team. Yeah, we'll they, they, they have, they, you, we do trust the Steelers more, no question. Because but the they've got to play better, yeah. and and you would think they would. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, and some of it on offense yeah. could be Ben. You know, maybe he yeah. needs more time. Who knows? It's the uniform and the head coach you trust, not the actual performance of the team. So yep. Far. Uh, uh, well, I got the big game tonight, Kansas City and Baltimore. I went ahead and decided to go, even though the trends say to take the Chiefs, I went ahead and took Baltimore tonight. And this is one of those games that Baltimore has to win. Uh, I said it last week uh, on one of the other shows. If, if Baltimore has any chance of beating the Chiefs in the postseason this season, they've got to beat the Chiefs in this game so they know they can beat the Chiefs in the postseason. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't think they will. Uh, I think, you know, pound for pound, their rosters. I like the Chiefs roster better. Uh, I assume Mahomes will make some crazy play in the fourth quarter like he always does. Uh, but, no, I totally agree with, you know, for a psyche standpoint, yeah, win this game. And then, you know, like you said, home field advantage doesn't mean much. But play the game in the playoff game in your house, not their house. And uh, I think that would go a long way to that. We've seen that matter, right? We've seen – I think the Rams Saints game a couple years ago, uh, it, same kind of thing. The regular season matchup uh, matters. So when, when it comes back around to playoff time. Also, this week, the big game on Sunday is probably going to be New England and Kansas City. So New England gets the break because the Chiefs are playing on a Monday night and they're on the road. Uh, this is uh, this is a big litmus test for the Patriots. Who are uh, you know they're they're two and one. It's a good two and one. You know they almost beat Seattle, so good start for the Patriots. It's, it's, again, it's all about keeping Cam Newton healthy, and so far he is. Yeah, uh, the AFC just gives us a great game every week, doesn't it, Greg? It's yep. Like, whether it's Baltimore versus Kansas City or Kansas City New England or Baltimore or Baltimore Houston or Pittsburgh Tennessee, the AFC just gives you a great game every week, and the NFC, you know doesn't <laughs> you know, yeah. we, had, we had green bay new orleans last night but like you said people are knocking new orleans now it's just like the nfc east is so bad and uh seattle you know the really i can remember it doesn't feel like that long ago maybe it probably was seven or eight years ago but where the nfc west was like the joke like yep. you just the nfc west was like oh god it's a shame we got to put somebody in the playoffs from the nfc west with seven playoff teams, ah, is it possible four NFC West teams make the playoffs? Is that possible? With uh, hey, you got NFC? the extra team, maybe. Who knows? Uh, yeah, uh, is that possible? It, yeah, it's, I guess it is possible. Uh, also, Indianapolis and Chicago, 
So that's a good game. Colts are two and one. The Bears are three and zero. Oh. It's time for the Bears to lose. I don't know. I don't know what the line is. I think the Colts are the favorite in yeah. Chicago by a couple points. Yeah, but I don't trust the Colts either. I mean, they beat up the Jets yesterday, but I don't. I don't trust the Colts much either. With you know Philip Rivers in a tight spot, does you know doesn't exactly instill, instill confidence. I don't know. My guess is. If I'm picking that game, I'm picking the Bears because, uh, you know, I'll, I'll ride the Foles magic for a little while. All right. Uh, Cleveland and Dallas. So this is, we'll find out how for real Cleveland is because they're 2-1. They've beaten nobody. And now they're playing a Cowboy team desperate for a win. You would think this was a good, pl- a good time to take the Cowboys as a four-point home favorite. But, again, you know, if, if Cleveland's for real, then yeah. uh, we'll find out. Remember, uh, yeah, I mean, Dallas is uh, – very close to it being an 0 3 team. And, you know, Giants are an 0 3 team. And Philly's an 0 3 team. So, uh, yeah, it's a good time to take Dallas. But uh, did I read somewhere, Greg, that Cleveland it has a winning record for the first time in yes. uh, six years? What, what was, oh, my God. That's unbelievable. So, so yeah. So, see, if that's why I always I get a kick out of the I know it's, it's, there's a lot of, of anguish as a Jet fan. But just imagine being a Cleveland Brown fan who's never won a Super Bowl, who has this sort of history. I'm sorry, but it's a lot worse than being a Jet fan. There is. Correct. I have Giants fans tweeting me today. They want the Maris to sell the team. I'm like, you've <laughs> yeah. won four Super Bowls in 35 years. You have two Super Bowls in 13 years. Right? You have stability. You want the Maris to sell the team yeah. and have some other guy buy the team who's a total wild card? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Maybe different. Daniel Snyder, will, will, yeah. his brother, yeah. will, uh, will 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 find a one. That, that I still can't even understand how they got away with how he got away with uh, becoming the owner of that team. But he did. Actually, I spoke to I asked Ken about that Marangola, who we interviewed a while back, and he said the reason that they that he, he actually got the, he basically convinced the NFL because it was that at that time he made all his money like in social media something like that and he was the future of, of that was the future of, of, of business and, and and he kind of you know convinced the league that oh this guy must you know be, he'll probably be a big help to the NFL and they can't get rid of him now <laughs> they wanted to uh, the primetime games how about these we got Philadelphia at San Francisco on Sunday night. So the Eagles are got this close to being 0 4, and Atlanta at Green Bay. Oh, uh, neither one of those is going to draw any excitement. Off. Hey, that's the NFC for you, right? Yeah, that's what true. They yeah, they've had both games. So yeah. yeah, so the Eagles are 0 4. That's a distinct possibility. Even though Mullins, I guess, will probably start again, and because uh, the Eagles have injuries too, so it's not like yeah, so San Francisco has oh. injuries, but so do Eagles. Yeah, they might be the two most injured teams in the league. And uh, yeah, and, and maybe if Atlanta were to get embarrassed or if they blow another 15 point lead on Monday Night Football, then that'd probably be it for Dan Quinn. They're not going to have a 15 point lead on Green Bay. There's the good news. If you're a Falcons That's true. fan listening, if you're a Falcons fan listening, good news is you're not going to blow a fourth quarter lead against Green Bay. So what's your assignment this uh, this week? The Giants? Uh are you gonna? Are you doing the Thursday game? I might be doing both. I don't know. I haven't checked my schedule. I might be doing Jets, Broncos Thursday, and Giants, the Rams. But I'm not going to LA. I'm uh, staying. I'll be most media this year. Greg is saving money on expenses because there's no locker room access. Yeah. Everything. Why? Zoom. Why go? I agree. Yeah, so, uh, the, you, the reason when you travel is to get in the locker room after the game. And uh, yeah, I think I'll be. I'd probably do Giants Rams on Sunday, but remotely. And I, I haven't watched a NFL football game on TV in a lot in like you know four years or something. So it'd be interesting. So. Yeah, the, as bad as the Jets are, uh, I I'm sorry, but they should not be. I mean, Denver's bad too, and they're, they're, they're going to throw out Jeff Driscoll on Thursday night. This is the first time this season that I will not have excuses after the Jets if they lose this game. At all. I don't care if they field the same team. I mean, Becton's loss, you know, that's tricky. But even if Becton doesn't play, they better beat Denver. For them to be a three-point dog to the Broncos is embarrassing. That shows you they, everybody thinks they're the, the least talented roster in the NFL. Uh, maybe they are. We'll find out on Thursday night. Yep, everybody I talk to thinks that. Or Brett so. Rippon might actually start. Who knows? <laughs> How embarrassing would that be? 
I mean, look, there have been crazy quarterbacks to win games. Well, Blake games. Bortles, maybe he'll get in there. Yeah, there have been crazy quarterbacks to win games. Uh, oh, I'm sure, win. I'm sure. You don't want to be on the uh, on the other end, though. So. Yeah. All right, Ryan, so uh, enjoy whatever game that you wind up going to or watching on TV this week, and uh, we'll talk to you uh, more than likely again next Monday. Sounds good, Greg. Thanks.